Your next comedian coming up to the stage, hopefully will not have stage fear anymore. Please welcome Jeremy Toller! Yeah! yeah. All right, folks. Listen, I live in Southside, Richmond, Virginia. I love living in Southside. There's just some businesses in Southside that I don't particularly care for. Like, there's this bowling alley on Melodian that I went to the other day. It's the most hood piece of shit that you can never go to. I'll never go back to this bowling alley. Like, I go in there, they got 30 lanes. Now, out of the 30 lanes, only 10 of them worked. And I'm like, okay. But they only had, like, 20 bowling balls. We had to share bowling balls between families. I'm like, who the fuck is this? One bowling ball had four holes in it. I'm like, how the hell do I bowl with these four holes? And then the guy that worked there, he told me the last dude that was there got mad and he shot it. <laughs> <laughs> then, they didn't even have the machine to return the ball to you. This is a dude at the back of the lane that bowls it back up. <laughs> like, what the fuck? And then, like, next to it is a pop up golf again. I'm not making this up. Go to the I go to this pop up thinking, alright, this might be better. No, nope. same old hood shit. I put like two quarters in one arcade and the arcade next to it came on. Like, how the fuck did this shit happen? Like, and then I went to go play putt putt golf. They didn't even have any more golf balls. They were using pool balls to play golf with. It was niggas out there hustling. Eight ball, corner hole, double bogey. I was like, <laughs> now I refer to myself well, and I apologize. Whatever. Um, oh, fuck all y'all white people. No. <laughs> Uh, recently that made me hate all white people for just that day. I don't hate you now, but you know, fuck all y'all just like emphasize the joke. But, <laughs> I come outside and I trip up over my porch and there's like a three-year-old white girl on the sidewalk on her big wheel and she laughs. Ha ha ha, you fell. I'm thinking I'm playing with her. Ha ha, I see you fall off your stupid little big wheel all the time. Ha ha ha. And then she responds, ha ha ha, you're black. <laughs> Seconds, as soon as I can get to it, boom, Paul Bass is texting me. 
<laughs> he just texted me, I swear to God. Like, what yeah, he's a white motherfucker too. He is a white motherfucker. That's why I'm not responding. I'm just continuing my work. Oh. Oh, yeah, see, I should have known that this joke was next because there was a segue. I was talking about fucking Minnie Mouse and Daisy Duck. Like, so the segue is, I really I really don't care about, like, stuffed animals. I can never really fuck them, but I honestly used to masturbate to Betty Boo. Like, that's, that's where the segue came in because she's, like, a cartoon character, but if she was real, like, I would, like, love to get some, some, some head from her. But then I thought, like, damn, her head is kind of big. Like, what would it be like if she sucked my dick? Like... Every time she'd go over there, like she'd headbutt me in the chin. Like, that's just like not sexy. I was, I'm gonna just end it like that. Y'all have a good night. Johnny A. Toller. Enjoy the rest of the comedians. Johnny A. Toller, everybody. <laughs> Running Disney movies for the, all of us. Your next comedian. Man responsible for putting on this show Fortnite after Fortnite. The man who just ran back and I can't find him anymore. Please welcome to the stage. Give it up for Jesse Jarvis. Yeah, yeah. yeah McCormick's and shit. Awesome. Guys, thank you so much for sticking around for this marathon of comedy fucking whatever. Uh, wait, you know what? Open the door. Open that smoke room door because I want... I want I want the people in the back to hear truth. That's, that's my desire for tonight. Because you know what, um, McCormick's guys, I, uh, I'm a man who has dreams. I have dreams and aspirations, just like every one of you. Um, I think it would be fun to be a DJ in a male strip club. I think that's one of my dreams. That's my personal thing, you know? And, and, and not so I can play that song, Let's Hear It From The Boys, whatever the fuck I feel like. Not because of that. But because I just know that one day, while I'm in the DJ booth, I'm gonna get, get to utter the sentence, Hey! Looks like that middle-aged woman's enjoying her full frontal lap dance from Dom Cheadle. <laughs> He's one of our best dancers. Talk about getting hot flashes, hey -o! <laughs> Which, by the way, McCormick's dick joke, menopause joke, one sentence. You're welcome. <laughs> God damn it. But you know what? The recession's been hard on everybody, so you know, you can't make it rain at the club like you used to, so you're just like shoving Groupon vouchers up through their cheese string. Like, like, hope you like Dave and Busters. I'm just like, fuck, Mom, what are you doing in here? Are you fucking embarrassing me. God damn it. Fuck. I, uh, I realize I'm never gonna be a sex symbol. I realize this. I had this realization at a 7 Eleven the other day. That's when this happened. I, and, and it's, it's, and the realization is, all right, if you are standing in line with your drink that you bought from the 7-Eleven and you're struggling to get the plastic straw into the drink hole, that's not going to be appealing to the attractive woman standing behind you in line. She's going to be like, oh, God, like, if he's struggling to get that plastic straw in the hole, like, I'm totally not fucking that guy. That, that's understandable. Like, she's not being a bitch. That's just biology, you know? <laughs> like... Not, not if I was getting the whole, like the straw into the hole, like she was gonna fuck me anyway, you know, like just like standing there in line, all creepy, like. <laughs> huh? You like? Plenty more where that came from. Her boyfriend fucking hated that. <laughs> Let me tell you about her boyfriend. Um, all right, and this is a public service announcement to all you guys out there. Uh, if you have long hair. And, uh, and you wear skinny jeans with your long hair, and uh, you wear flip-flops with your fucking skinny jeans. Um, you better have a French accent or something, because like that's just, that's just really sad and pathetic, that whole look. Because guys who wear flip-flops piss me off in general anyway, you know? It's just like, because when a guy has his, wears flip-flops, to me it's just, it's fucking rude, I think. Guys who wear flip-flops, fucking rude. Like, if I'm in a restaurant or something, and I see you wearing flip-flops, everything all of a sudden smells like hummus to me. And that works me out. It was like, uh, God. This, it, it, and, like, you could be some really nice guy. You do work for the Peace Corps, or you help, like, starving children in Africa or, or something. Like, it doesn't matter. You're gonna look like a fucking asshole. And, but then, like, you know, then the guy opens his mouth. He's like, well, in France, you don't have to pay for health care, and... Blowjobs are publicly funded by fucking teachers unions. I'm like, okay, well, he's got a French accent. This makes sense. It's not me being pissy. It's just it's cultural difference. Whatever. Bullshit. 
I'm done telling that joke. That didn't fucking work. All right, let's talk about fast food. Why not? All right, I think um, I, I see these commercials for fast food, and uh, they they get on my nerves because they're trying to make it seem like fast food, like McDon like going to dinner on a date at McDonald's is now an acceptable date meal, which to me sounds like another one that white man's lies, but like. And she's like, yeah, McDonald's night is now date night, which means McDonald's night is now fuck night. Which is bullshit. It's, it's, it, like, unless you're going to feed her four kids or something that are yours, she's not going to be impressed, you know? And this comes from this commercial I saw where this guy was having this inner monologue, and he's like, oh man, it seems like a really special girl. Man, how do I impress her? I could show her that I'm a big spender, or I could, I could spend money on this 20-piece McNuggets for $4.99. She'll think of a really, like, frugal spender. It's like, no, she's not going to think that. Like, her thought was like, oh, God, I just blew this guy in the fucking car because I thought we were going to Mario Batali's new restaurant, but I'm sitting here with some asshole in a trucker hat eating chicken bites. He's telling me about how, you know, oh, yeah, you remind me of my ex-girlfriend, but he needs that as a compliment, so apparently that's okay. Whatever. You know what, I'll, I'll leave you guys on this and I'll get it out of your hair. And uh, cause we got a couple more comics left and they're really funny. Um, I, uh, I saw a Klansman the other day. And <laughs> that was a bummer. Uh, and, and what baffles me is like, seeing a Klansman in 2012, it's, it's really weird because you see them in the history textbooks, you know, they look really scary and menacing. You know, there's like fire in the background, and, like dinosaurs, lasers and shit. Like, you, you know, you're like really scared of them. But seeing a Klansman in 2012, it's a lot like, you know when it's tax season, and you see that, uh, you see that, you see that person dressed as the Statue of Liberty, and they're like, hey, get your taxes done here. And it's like, yeah, they're dressed as the, in that fucking costume, but it looks really sad and pathetic. And they like, just got this dead stare in their eye, you know, it's like some dude trapped in a shitty marriage or something. It's like, I'm not even racist, I just put on this ghost costume with the eye holes cut out because I'm just trying to hide away from my wife. <laughs> Fuck! Just put on some Martha Stewart lens, guess I hate black people today. Shit. Gonna have to open up my racist cupcake shop. Call it Cake Cake Cake. <laughs> and no, we do not serve chocolate. Anyway, uh, McCormick, thank you for letting me try out new stuff. I love you guys. Enjoy the rest of the show. We're Pony Robert Chandra and everybody. out the door as of right now. Thank you for sticking around. We are in the home stretch. Are you excited for your next comedian? <laughs> Thank you for acknowledging me. Your next comedian, apparently, like Homer Simpson, is banned from several shopping centers. Please welcome to the stage Mr. Chris Martin. I'm always nervous when I do stand-up comedy. I'm nervous, more nervous than Mitt Romney's family dog. <laughs> when he realizes they're going on another Canadian vacation. Mitt's not worried if the dog falls off the family car roof because he figures he can always use the hide for sacred underwear. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I wear Victoria's Secret sacred underwear or I wear no sacred underwear at all. Problem with underwear bombs, the skid marks. <laughs> Barack Obama has promised to be even harder on terrorists in his second term than in his first. His new campaign slogan, the chicken in every pot and a drone strike on every village. <laughs> He's going to fire Bo the Portuguese water dog and hire Mo the CIA waterboarding dog. He's even promised to hunt down and kill Hope and Change. <laughs> Barack Obama campaign is selling Barack Obama dildos to raise money. They're long on promises and short on delivery. <laughs> Hillary Clinton wrote a book called It Takes a Village to Raise a Child. She has a new, village, a new book out called It Takes a Drone Strike to Wipe Out a Village. She went to India and wore a bracelet promoting the war against sex trafficking 
said real men don't pay for sex. Bill Clinton wore a bracelet that said real men don't pay for cigars. A lot of you may not know this, but the founder of, Mus of the Muslim religion, Muhammad, had a nine-year-old wife, which means while she was chowing down on Happy Meals, he was chowing down on her vagina. <laughs> while she was getting into My Little Pony, he was getting into her little vagina. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Muhammad. Muhammad who? Muhammad, Chris Hansen wants to talk to you. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus who? Miley Cyrus who's too old for Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? The Olsen twins. The Olsen twins who? The Olsen twins are too old for a Muhammad sandwich. <laughs> Someone found a finger in an Arby's sandwich. In other news, someone found two penises in a Kim Kardashian sandwich. <laughs> you can now buy a Justin Bieber singing toothbrush for $9.95 from Walgreens. This means you and Selena Gomez can have Justin Bieber in your mouth. <laughs> I want to be the first man to put his penis in a VCU football cheerleader's vagina. Because that would be the Richmond equivalent of being the first man on the moon. <laughs> Once I get my, why am I going to get my freaking light here? It just goes on. Thank you. Thank you. My minister keeps telling me to be more like Jesus. So next week I'm going to go down to Jeff Davis Highway and hang out with the prostitutes. <laughs> Thank you very much. My name is Chris Barton. Welcome back to the stage. Your host. MC Rakani Ramachandran. Thank you. Chris Martin, everybody. Put your hands together for Chris Martin. Your next comedian coming to the stage recently won crowd favorite at the Richmond Funny Bone. Please put your hands together for Clay Show. Do it. <laughs> 